Life in these United States of America in the year since the pandemic rolled into our consciousness has felt like a drawn out Palm Sunday. So here's what I mean by that. Remember the story. Jesus knew that his teachings were upsetting the established civic and religious leaders. The power of Rome was getting concerned about this rabble-rousing, hope-stirring Jew who was teaching that all people should have access to all of God's abundance. Jesus was drawing crowds and stirring hope, and that's a dangerous combination, especially when the people being stirred and hope-filled are residents of an occupied country. Jesus was also a deep concern to the religious authorities because he was challenging the established norms about how it is God should be worshiped and who it is that had authority. And the religious authorities of the, at the time of Jesus also were anxious because they too saw their grip on the people being challenged by Jesus. So knowing all these things, what does Jesus do? Well, <laughs> he rides right into trouble. He rides into the seat of power on the back of a colt. He enters the city of Jerusalem in the ways that speak the message that he has so wanted the people to hear, messages about humility and the right use of power. And Jesus knows that he is riding into challenge and he is riding into trouble and he knows he is in danger, but he does it anyway. The hope of the people pulls him into the city, into the place where power is, was held and kept. And the gathered crowd, as they see Jesus riding into their midst, the gathered crowd goes wild. They throw palm branches on his path and they cry out, Hosanna, save us. And their hearts shower Jesus with the power of hope. And so it is, Palm Sunday begins, with so much hope, so much anxiety and fear and possibility and catharsis, and so much hope that finally a Savior would save them. Jesus enters Jerusalem. A reading from the book of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. Then they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. We know that since the pandemic began, we have been crying out, Hosanna, save us. During this past year, we have sought 
salvation through so many people. We have sought salvation through people like Dr. Anthony Fauci and President Donald Trump and Stacey Abrams and Governor Tim Walls and Dr. Jan Malcolm and Senator Mitt Romney and Vice President Kamala Harris and President Joe Biden. Well, our chosen list of saviors is as varied as we are. We so want, don't we? someone to ride into the power of the city and vanquish all of the pain of this world because in the midst of so much that devastates us, we can sometimes feel very small and very powerless. And so we are even more want to get swept up into the roar of the crowd and the shout of hope because hope Brothers and sisters, let us never forget, hope is a sacred power. So on Palm Sunday, we celebrate the need we share. We need to come together, and we need to shout hope. I'd like to share with you these verses from Psalm 118, and it is called A Song of Victory. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say God's steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O oh Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and God has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. Thus ends the reading. So Jesus rides into the city, bathed in the palpable power of hope. Jesus rides into sure confrontation drawn by the power of hope and the inevitability he knows of pain. Because Jesus teaches a way of life that will not sell out to civic or religious notions of what it is that makes for power. And this is no small thing. We know that Palm Sunday means the entrance into the seat of civic and religious power, and we know that Palm Sunday means also the entrance into pain and heartache. We know that the celebrated Savior, Jesus, will be scorned and crucified and left on a cross to die. And we wonder, how did it all happen? How did the sweet catharsis of a crowd shared Hosanna turn into the bitter crowd shared catharsis of crucify him? One of the many lessons of Holy Week is this. 
Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem bearing in his very body the teachings that he sought to share and his teachings come down to a radical message about loving God and loving neighbor. It's the job description. And as it was true then, it seems to remain true now. There is something about love that terrifies. Love terrifies us because it asks of us vulnerability, and it asks of us a willingness to collude with possibility, and love asks of us sacrifice, and it is messy, and love asks us an opening of our hands and our hearts, and love takes us from what we have known into what we cannot ever imagine, and love terrifies us because it asks so much of us. So as we ask ourselves how it is that the body of Jesus was broken by fear, we might well ask ourselves how it is the body of Jesus continues to be broken by fear, not in long ago Jerusalem, but here and now in this world we share. Palm Sunday calls us to awareness that the gift of Jesus riding into the seat of power on the back of a colt is meant to remind us that we too are called to ride into places of power, bearing witness to the astounding and life-changing power of our commitment to love God and to love our neighbors knowing that it will hurt, knowing that in loving, we risk so much. But we choose to do the work of loving in the way of Jesus. And the way of loving in the way of Jesus Christ looks like this. The Apostle Paul wrote these words to the church in Philippi. And to me, they are the most stunning invitation to put on the mind and the manner and the love of Christ Jesus. I read from Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself and he took on the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Amen and amen. The pandemic has taught us so many things, not the least of which is this. Our saviors are not only national figures or statewide figures or figures who get their names in the news. Our saviors, the pandemic is teaching us, us are our neighbors, right? Every day during this pandemic, healthcare providers have gone to work. 
They knew they would encounter heartache and brokenness. They put themselves and their families at risk, and they went to work anyway. Every day during this pandemic, food processing plants and farmers and truck drivers and migrant workers and grocery store personnel have gone to work. They knew that they were risking their own health and the health of their families, and they went to work anyway. Through this past year, People have taken to the streets to protest racial injustice. They have made signs, and they have worn masks, and they have marched, and they have advocated for better, and they knew that they were risking their own health and the health of their families, but they spoke up anyway. Throughout this past year, public health employees, police, and fire and civic workers went to work. They have literally put their lives on the line, and the well-being of their families has been put on the line, and they went to work anyway. Through this past year, volunteers and staff in this church have provided food for 80 people a week and connection for thousands of people and prayer shawls and countless prayers and fueling of hope and lives have been put on the line and ministry happened while we were distanced. Ministry happened anyway. You get what I'm saying, don't you? The human desire for a savior is immense. We want to throw our hopes and our voices at someone in the hopes that they will do the work of saving on our behalf. But what we have learned over this past year and what Jesus teaches us is this. The way of Jesus means we become, you and I, all of us, that we become willing to enter the gates of the cities and of our lives as hero saviors of each other, of the community we are calling beloved and holy. We, you and I, we kneel at the feet of this world God has given us to love. We humble ourselves and seek to live the messy, terrifying beauty that is love. And we do this knowing that nothing else will indeed save us. We do this work of loving because we are the people of Jesus Christ. Amen.